In our last tutorial, we looked at making these pumpkins and the animation effect, but we didn't focus very much on making this kind of creepy, spooky environment for your Halloween project. So let's have a look at that today. Okay, so to create this eerie scene, let's uh, start with Hugo here, our pumpkin from the last tutorial. If you've not seen that tutorial, I'll put a link in the top corner and in the description. Um, it is a bit of a long one, admittedly, it's over an hour, but it's got a lot of stuff in there and how to create the pumpkin, the textures, and the really cool um, ghostly apparition effect uh, that I really like anyway. Um, but yeah, take, if you if you want to watch that, then have a have a look at it. And uh, it is chaptered, so if there's something specific that you'd like to look in there, then um, you know you could always jump around the chapters, and it's all pretty well laid out. So let's kick off with Hugo, as I say, and let's just move him around. And let's just turn our screencast keys on. They're not behaving at the moment. New screencast capability. There we go. And what we want to do first is we want to create a plane. Let's put this plane down in zeros. There we go. And drop it down a bit. Yeah, about to there. And we want to make it pretty big. So I think 25 works quite nicely. Uh, we're in EV mode here. Uh, I think our settings are all set to what they were for the tutorial. So bloom, dab. Yeah, that's all along. That's all looking good. Now, let's go straight to the plane. And then what we want to do is go to the body fire. In fact, no, we don't want to do that. We want to go to edit first. Not that edit. We want to go to edit object first. Subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. Just keep subdividing it a bit. Uh, that's probably about right. And then what we want to do is we want to go back to object mode. And we want a displacement modifier now straight away that moves up. We need to add a texture to it. So let's go into our textures. And I find clouds works quite nicely on this one. Um, of course, you can muck around with the numbers to your heart's content. That works quite nicely about there. You can, you can even animate it if you want to do so. It's a nice wavy effect. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. And so we want to go back to here and you can add and change. So if you wanted to, you could have that kind of background if you wanted. But I quite like having it down about here. About one looks pretty good. Now it all looks very angular. So let's add a subdivision uh, modifier. And uh, I quite like cranking these up quite high and then doing a shade smooth on it. So you've got this kind of smooth look, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a bit more detail to it. So we go into our shader tab, shader tab on here, and what we want to do is not the world, we want to go into object mode, and let's just click new. There we go, let's zoom in so you can see everything. Excellent, okay. Now then, let's turn that on so we can actually see what we're doing. Feel free to leave Hugo on. He's not really in the way. In fact, it's actually quite helpful to have Hugo on. So you can see what the reaction is at the bottom. What we want to do is just add a bit of detail. So this is all wavy, it's all very nice, but we want some detail in there. So we added a bump node, we add a Voronoi texture. Voronoi, Voronoi texture. And we plug that into the height. And Straight away, it's adding a little bit of detail. Personally, I quite like the Chebyshev on this one. And we can see there it's coming in, but what we're going to do is we want to really scale that up. So uh, let's say one, let's make it 200. Let's make it really dense. That's that one there. That's maybe yeah, 150. 50. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to just play around this color a little bit and just bring it down. So it's not it's not so dark that you can't see it, but it is. There we go. That's kind of what we're trying to capture here. It's kind of creepy kind of pattern that's going on. Just little things like that. I just find adds to it. It's not something you you're gonna be able to see in any real detail, but it is it is there, and I quite like the fact that it's there. Let's just 
zoom in. So what I've done now is I've put a colour ramp in. Because you can kind of see all this is kind of continuous. What you can do for colour ramp is you can drop that off. So it's not necessarily everywhere. It bleeds it in and out a little bit. So let's do that. And again, with your own projects, feel free to, to muck it around with it. I'm, I, I enjoy... Uh, seeing the randomness of this and the, the beauty of things like this is it's very difficult to create two identical versions so let's play around with the roughness a little bit you might find playing around with things like this really comes into its own when we've finished our scene so let's leave that for now and what we want to do is actually that looks that's pretty good so straight away and the reason I'm keeping Hugo in is you can see this like get an appreciation for how it's going to look later on so let's go into the world settings now because what we're going to do is uh we're going to create first of all the starry background and then we're going to create some mist around it so to create the starry background and i've used this a few times so you may have recognized this from other tutorials um it's actually quite a straightforward process so let's just do it from scratch so let's make a shader and when i climb that into there i think it's bottom one i might have to swap these around uh, make sure that's set to black and let's have a look at the sky. So, oh yes, and then what we want is an emission. I'm gonna plug that emission into the upper shader, if we can get it to fit. And then what we want is a mix, not a mix, but a color ramp. We'll put the color ramp into this other bit. Actually, we wanna put it into, this, into the strength. Yes, that is working. It's working good. Good. Now we want a Voronoi texture. Now the Voronoi texture is going to add a bit of a pan to this, but don't worry. This will catch up. Why is the Voronoi not picking up? Ah, used nodes. There we go. I was beginning to think that looked a bit strange there because it should have started changing the color of it. So just make sure the use nodes is indeed switched on. Now straight away you can see this kind of a blocky, weird effect. It doesn't look very starry at all, does it? But when you increase this to something crazy, you get what looks like noise. And the beauty of the color ramp is if you drag this color ramp all the way down, you get this effect. And it looks, starts to look really very good. Um, let's just move our camera. Actually, it's set to bezel circle. If anyone wants to see what's going on there, there we go. Maybe I should do a tutorial on camera effects. But essentially, the camera is locked to the bezel circle, and it's animated to that. Uh, but that's not important. You could just have it set to camera, and the camera is locked onto Hugo as well. So no matter where you move the camera, it will always stay locked on uh, Hugo or your pumpkin, whatever you call your pumpkin. So that is your very basic starry night. That's looking that's looking pretty good. So let's uh, just zoom in so you can see that a little bit clearer. I don't know why that's there. We don't need that there. There we go. So that's the basics of that. But now what we want is we want our foggy effect. Now to do that, we need volumetric. So we need a principal volume. And on the off, I'm going to plug that straight into here. And that's going to go straight into kind of green mode because the light is green, the various other colors going on there. It just looks a bit of a mess. So we don't want fog everywhere. We only want fog in certain locations. So to do that, we want gradient texture and we want to plug that gradient texture into your density. There we go. And you might start to see what we're doing here because actually, there you go. That looks, that's perfectly captured it. Now straight up, that's, yeah, that's nice, but not very useful. So to get around that, we need Control and T. If I go up to here and Control, I wonder if I do that. No, it won't. Is it Shift and T? It is Control and T. There we go, Control and T eventually. And the green cast isn't working on that screen. That's, uh, that's a little bit annoying, but it was Control and T, that one. And then we'll want to do is we want to rotate these round a little bit. So these, I think, is minus 90. Um, I only know that from experience. So it sometimes takes a while to get used to it. Uh, and then what you can do is you can vary that if you want. But what I like to do sometimes is put a nice color ramp in. Plug into there. 
and that just controls it a little bit more. So this controls the height, essentially where that grading cutoff is. Let's see what's going on there. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. You don't want to go crazy with it. So that, that looks that was pretty awesome. But if I was to say render that image now. Take your time. There we go. What I'd quite like to have is a bit of you know mist in the background. So we've got this going on down here. So let's add that. Let's let's just add that. What we do is we actually I've got to do one more thing, and that's to add a little bit of noise. And this is just another element of control over it. So noise, texture, into here, and what we want to do is a mix shader, uh, mix RGB even, and we want to plan that into there. The color into here, generated into there. There we go. And it's just as I said, it's just another layer of control and. What that's done is it's kind of mixed it up a little bit. So let's, let's just play with that. So it's not just like a firm locking of um, mist. It's actually, if I do that and vary between, you can see what's going on there. There you go. It just, just mixes it up a little bit. Just adds that little something to it. And I quite like that. I wonder if the light is set to green. Let's, let's, let's change that. It's a bit more night. Like there we go. That's that was pretty good. I, I actually quite like that. Again, so much variety, so many things you can do with it. There we go. Yeah, that was pretty good. But as I say, the background, yeah, it's not really capturing that eeriness yet. So we want to go shift D, copy this down to here. And what I'm gonna do straight away is I'm gonna lock that into here. So we've, this should break out, yeah, that particular uh, mist effect is now locked out and what we want to do is we want to vary there we go. if you can see what I'm doing there actually moving the band of fog up at an angle it's uh, I think it should be bending up at an angle there we go if we go all the way up creates this wall you don't want it too far forward you only want it to be high you don't want it too far forward because then Hugo gets blocked out so if I was to go crazy and go like that, and then go into, yeah, that's that's almost too much. In fact, it's, it's actually good to, to use that view. That's too much. Just remember, you've always got your fog glow at the bottom. Okay. Now we've done that, and we can vary that a little bit. We can change, change this. Everything is so... Um, so adjustable so again no two are ever going to be the same um, pull it. now we want to add these two together plan them out to there and that one up to there and that should create our kind of misty effect and that looks pretty good i'm quite i'm quite happy with that that looks pretty awesome you can go a little bit further and let's say shift a we want to put a little light in the background for instance Point light or start up there. Let's move that back in. Let's make them zero. It's a bit annoying that they're off, but okay. And let's move that back to say, I don't know, minus, minus five. There you go. And our new point light is here. Let's crank that up to 100 or something like that. Let's just see what that looks like. You can change that light a little bit. You can add as many lights as you want you can change whatever you like you can even animate it if you want but there you go but yeah that is an incredibly straightforward and simple setup that one so if i render that image keep that setting is on there you go something really very simple and uh yeah i think that looks that doesn't look too bad uh, for say a 15 minute run that looks pretty good so uh yeah i mean take it one step further and you can have this animation going on there obviously spend a little bit more time playing with the settings playing with those textures but by all means muck around with it the best of your ability and uh yeah you'll just create something that's totally unique 
uh, for your scene. Um, if you do get a chance, please do have a look at that uh, tutorial on the pumpkin. Um, again, the, lo uh, the location of that link to it even is in the description. So, yes, it's an hour long, but don't worry, it's all chaptered. So if you're interested in only making the pumpkin, then there's a bit on literally making the pumpkin. There's a bit on the textures as well. And then, of course, at the end, we have that animation effect, which you can see here in this video. So um, that leaves uh, me with not much else to add, except thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, if you do create your own uh, videos, your own um, versions of this, please do uh, drop a link in the comments. Let me know via ArtStation or wherever. And uh, yeah, I'd love to I'd love to see it. And uh, so, yeah, that's great. Until next time. Thank you very much. And uh, Happy Halloween, everyone.